Fresh data says the median home in the United States now costs 7.6 times the median household income, which is almost twice the historic level. In fact, it's above the peak of the 2008 housing bubble. Meanwhile, according to Fed, Americans expect home prices to keep going up by a median $20,000, that's 5.1%, in the next year, which is double the pace of last year. That, by the way, is the second highest reading, yes, even higher than the 2008 housing bubble. In recent videos have highlighted how hard it is for the young and the working class facing a ladder where the first 20 rungs have been knocked out. One survey found over one in five renters are now skipping meals or selling personal belongings to make rent. Indeed, many millennials are giving up, resigned to renting for life and doom spending three-day Caribbean cruises instead of growing a nest egg on which to build a family and, in theory, a retirement. I've also highlighted what's happening to the young as a result. They're turning from the middle-class American dream towards a nihilistic hand-to-mouth existence, feeling like a rat on a treadmill and pretty pissed off about the whole situation. As in, burn it down, pissed off. A main driver of this hopelessness has been housing costs. After all, when the Fed prints up trillions and dumps them into asset markets, housing is the main way that regular Americans can keep up. They can hook their net worth to that meth-pumped rocket sled. After all, just 20% of Americans own socks directly, so housing is their retirement plan, and it's what protects their family from those soaring rents currently forecast by the New York Fed to rise nearly double-digit in the coming year. Now, that savior is fading. Since COVID, housing costs have doubled to nearly 3000 per month, while the minimum income needed to qualify for the median home is in the six figures. That puts housing squarely in the category of science fiction for the vast majority of Americans in their 20s. So they get the Fed's inflation, but they've got no assets to pump. So what is driving house prices? The main driver, of course, is money printing. Since the Fed's COVID orgy when nearly one in three dollars had fresh ink on it, house prices rose nearly 50 percent, while broader inflation rose between 20 and 35 percent, depending whether you believe government numbers or proxies like fast food menus. So if prices rose between a fifth and a third, why did housing costs double? There we've got the Washington perfect storm made of higher mortgage rates, higher insurance, higher property tax, and coming next, green mandates that my colleague E.J. Antoni estimates could add another 31000 to the average house price. Taking each, the mortgages went up because the Fed hiked interest rates, which it did to strangle the productive economy to cancel the inflation it printed. The utterly predictable side effect of sending mortgages from 3% to over 7 Now, if you're borrowing 380000 that's the median home with 10% down, the difference between 3% and 7% on a mortgage is roughly 350000 in additional interest paid. Throw on soaring home insurance, up 20% in the last year alone, soaring property taxes, which escalate in lockstep with house prices and those coming green mandates, that will add 31000 but Biden's minions assure us we'll pay back in cheap electricity in 90 years. That is not a joke. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. Millions of Americans have been holding their breath, hoping either mortgage rates come down or house prices come down. With inflation now reaccelerating, neither may happen for years to come. A new episode of the Roundup podcast just dropped. Check it out at PeterStAnons.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.